wielding with big swords. Does it work? Let's find out. Wielding is something that comes up a lot in movies and video games in the comment section of my YouTube channel, and there's a couple of different options here. So the one that people are most used to, I think, is dual wielding two big swords. You see it in popular media, Game of Thrones has got it, I mean, you name it, and someone has done two giant swords, two long sword level swords to dual wield. Um, and is that realistic? Uh, we are going to try and find that out today. We're going to be using the synthetic swords today for two reasons. One, because I don't have enough of the steel swords we usually fence with to do us having two each. And two, because I have a feeling that this is going to be dangerous. So, here we go. Matt's going to have uh, two. I'm going to have one. We're going to see what happens. Ready? Fence. That was, that was my throat. definitely my... Uh, you might have gotten my wrist a little bit with that one, but it didn't feel very powerful though. No. Okay. That was the flat. Okay. Yeah, that almost was, but it was the flat. You flatted me or I flatted no, you? No, no, you flatted me. Okay. Your edge line was pretty badly off. Let me try some. Kind of, kind of rubbed against my back, okay. but you were pulling back, so I don't know. You got this, but was it pressure cutting the bit? Do you feel like you had any power going through my leg? Maybe a little. Maybe but a little bit? No, I'm going to slice it over Try to tiny put it inside my neck cut. Probably not. Okay. Well, has it got your hand? Uh, I think it might have touched my hand a little bit. Yeah. Wouldn't have stopped the other cut, though. No. Oh, he blocked it that one and cut it. So, what Matt's doing is he's basically creating this like a parry dagger. Right. It's actually not super ineffective. But it's not more effective than just having a buckler or something. I don't yeah. Think. Yeah. Because um, this is long, and I feel like I'm concerned that I'll back them into yeah. each other or something. You know, let's see how it goes. Okay. Because I'm still getting used to this too. It is weird. Got me with the thrust to the face. Yeah, one thing I'm discovering is it's hard for me to do a good parry against you with one hand with something so long. Yeah. Because all you have to do is make it to about here. And this we've talked reason. before, long swords are not heavy, but they are long. So if he gets up to the weak part of my blade, I have one hand to try and stop his pressure versus if he's down here, it's fine. Yeah. And these are lighter, a little bit lighter than the yeah. long swords, so there's... They're not a ton lighter, but... Again, you know, so. we're working with the limitations of what we have. We don't have enough swords to do two full steel long swords so. and one over here. But this is still pretty accurate. One thing I'm thinking of from video games is, like, Dark Souls 3 has these dual swords where you can do these strikes where it's, like, one after the other. I'm not feeling like doing that makes any sense. Uh, people are probably thinking that right now. So you're, so you're kind of doing this as, as your instincts tell you to do, well, right? What, Let's what, do it. My brain tells me, you've got two things. That's an opportunity to have some variety. Yeah, block and attack. Not just like, oh, now I'm gooder. It, it's not that, it doesn't work that yeah. way. Like this, I feel like this one, or this one, could be good for covering the line on yeah. approach. So you're basically doing what Rapier and Dagger would do. That's or, what I'm doing. Yeah, okay, let's keep going like this for a minute and then we're going to switch up. But I'm not trained in any other kind of system that yeah. might give me more things to do. Yeah. So I don't know. Yep, I'm on. Alright, I'm going to change tactics. You yeah. caught in here, but it was after you made contact with my sword and didn't have a lot yeah, of legs. Yeah, that first parry, you kind of made it through anyway, and then you got my shoulder. So what I'm discovering is that he is weaker than me right now with this sword. Yes. Because he only has one hand. We talked before about how a hard cut isn't more effective. That changes what when it's... This? It changes when he only has one hand. Because now, if I actually put some... Not a heavy attack. Not a heavy attack so much, but a direct attack, a direct and fast attack to a certain line instead of trying to do tricky stuff. It's harder for him to block. I will. I, this okay. will not work. I'm not even going to okay, do it. Okay, try it. I'm not going to do anything. Okay. This isn't useful. Ready? Yeah. It's yeah, it's just too, it's really harder to hold, and this is back here. It doesn't help at all. All right, ready? Just popped into my head. Sorry. No, it's fine. <laughs> Oh, 
Uh, yeah, a little I, bit of contact in here. Would I have done anything in there? I don't think so. Okay. There wasn't, I didn't feel any lateral, okay. like, striking. Maybe a little bit on my head there. So what I'm finding is pretty effective. He's putting these both out. Right. And I'm sweeping them away, and he doesn't have the power to stop me from doing that. Not really. Yeah. Um, if he only had one hand on the sword, if he, if he dropped the sword, he could probably have proposed that and do something. Better, yeah. Yeah. Or he could change and transition. He has less leverage than me, so I can do quicker movements with my swords, and I have more power. Let's do one more normal switch. You've got more control, too. Yeah, let's do one more normal switch. Okay. Um, this turned out to be some kind of ugly thrust, and then this missed. Okay, okay. Let's say something. Yeah, but did I not connect? Yeah, you did. You did. Okay. Yeah. So I got your neck, and then you hit me. So. Right. Did that get performed? It got here after it connected with me. Yeah, not a lot of. Yeah. Yeah, I was doing. That actually worked. Yeah, it worked. I got that hand, you wouldn't have had that sword. Okay. But that's what made it in. And then I think afterwards you had a little bit of my leg. Yeah. Okay, so for it. Okay. So, two long swords versus one sword, with the caveat that these are lighter. It wasn't super ineffective, but it basically was a less effective parrying weapon. Yeah. You had more success with a rapier and a dagger against me with a long sword oh, yeah. than you did with two full size long swords. Yeah. So, like, was it better? No. I think that I still came out ahead. Yeah, I, think no, I, you I, did. I didn't feel like this forearm of this isn't used to having something yeah. quite that heavy, which they're not heavy overall, but usually in my left arm I just have something yeah. light. So my left arm's a little bit more worn out than it normally would be, and I just felt like the only like truly useful thing I could do with it was Perry. cover myself from you while I get you with this, and you, that's what I other things I think you might have gotten me one time with the second blade, yeah. Usually what you're able to do is tangle up this sword mm -hmm. to clear that sword to hit me, which is exactly what you do with a rapier and dagger, or a sword, like a, a short weapon like that. Um, was it totally ineffective? It was more no. effective than I thought it was going to be, if I'm being honest. It was, it, it was harder to go up against than I thought. I thought it was going to be a walk in the park. But it's probably because Matt used it in such a way that... It's not, I mean, that's not the way you see two long swords being used in media. Yeah. You definitely see them being used where they're both Very flourishing. swinging around and doing yeah. fluid stuff. And, um, Which is just like juggling to me. So, so that's kind of my thing with the choreo. Yeah. Let's go ahead and switch and we'll see what happens. All right. See what happens. I, I tried the thing where I kept it withdrawn on my shoulder or whatever, and it wasn't really any better. I was, uh, I was surprised with how many you got. I didn't think you'd get any. But like you, like you said, there's a reason that people started using rapier and dagger. So, you know, adapt. I still think you would have been better off with just a normal. I think you would have... I, I might have even been better off with just like a normal single-handed sword. I think you would have been better off if you had just had one sword instead of two. I think yeah. All right, let's try this. Ready? See, I don't want to do that. That's fine. That was a skated off of the Okay. I hit your sword. You got me. It's a little bit of a slice there. That one got my forearm. Did it actually get it? Or did uh, it get to the guard? Because my parry was kind of moving this way. So I think it would have been enough force to cut it open pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Scissors. <laughs> oh no, he's stabbed on that one. We still ate it. Would it have stopped your? No, I was already. I would have gotten cut. Yeah, you would have gotten cut. Now, if I had been thinking better, I might have, I might have realized that was coming and then stabbed you. Possibly. Here. But I kind of stopped. Did you hear anything? I don't, maybe, okay. I don't know, sometimes I can feel it through these cuffs and stuff. I thought something, but I ate one in the back. Right on the buttock, or was it on your back? I'll be honest, these are lighter, I think, than 
the swords over there. Yeah. So there's a bit of an advantage given to this because these are plastic. So you're saying it'd be harder with the heavier. Oh yeah, it would definitely be harder. I'm not sure if these were properly weighted long swords, I'd be able to do this as quickly as I am. Um, but here we are. Yep, <laughs> that's what we got. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if your cuts would have made it. Not in time. Okay. I'm basically doing some extreme fighting. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, how bad was that? Sec no, not bad at all. Okay. Well, it, I mean, I'm fine, but I think it would have been yeah. a pretty brutal cut. It was a brutal cut. Yeah. Probably would have gotten pretty good. Nah, I didn't get that. You got that. Okay. Yeah, he cut through my attack. Right. Which, if it had been a normal attack, and he cut into it, I don't think he would have been able to move it to the side. Probably not. But he, he was able to cut into it and move it pretty well. Keep going. I'm trying to do some fancy stuff. It's all right. That one. That one got my hand. That was a good one. I got you. Is that a bad cut? Yeah, I got you. That was a good follow up cut. I didn't even see it coming. I got caught up on my own sword. That's something that I yeah. felt like was going to happen to me, too. Yeah. See, that I used this like a parrying dagger. But you could have easily done that with just your hand, too. Honestly, close. I could have. Yeah. Um, a couple more, a couple more. Okay. Okay. Hand shots. Once again, hand cuts. <laughs> that one just got my fingers, yeah. I've been doing a lot of screamer recently, so... I've never done scream. I mean, I've screamed, but I've never done screamer. But the thing about that, though, is, right? Oh, got it. <laughs> if anything, that was more... Yeah. That was harder for me to deal with, because you had so much more control. I don't know, this is, a, this is definitely a more mug result than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. So we don't go into these things, we go into these things with an idea of what we think is going to happen, but sometimes we're surprised. Yeah. I missed! The first one missed. Second one you got me. Oh, did I? Yeah. Because I went like this. A second attempt at a thrust or yeah. something changed, I did feel a thrust on my midsection. Eventually. That was my hand. I okay. All right. So, the first thing I want to say is when you were just presenting both as threats, that felt a lot better. The hardest to, yeah. to deal with. On it my did. End. So, when you had it like this, I knew that one of the only things you could do was that. Yeah. So, now, Grant, I did get a couple of touches on you. You did. Um, yeah, you did. So, like, we're not going to totally write this off. There, again, there are caveats. These are, well, hold on a second. Matt, do you think you could do that same thing with this? How much heavier is it? It honestly doesn't feel that much heavier. It so feels, it, it feels, yeah, it's, swinging it is totally different. Totally different. It pulls a lot more and it's yeah. harder to, See, and, and we've both right. learned how to stop cuts yeah. with our hands. So the, 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 and but again, this is my favorite because this test is, it is a good approximation, but because, again, you know, donate to Celsius Arts, let us get more of these and we'll test this again with steel swords. But this, this is set up a bit differently. It does have more weight at the end and there's stuff that I can do with those plastic trainers that I just cannot do with this. So I think that there is, like, like we said, Nothing is impossible with swords. Mm -hmm. Just some things are better ideas than others. Some things it doesn't really make it. It doesn't really make sense to choose to do certain yeah. things. Um, so I like, like, like I said, I, I wouldn't choose. I would not choose to dual wield these swords. If you were like a beast of a person, and this Why was like I just a, two, a really big sword. Honestly, yeah. Um, right, yeah. Just get, which just, is what the guy in Game of Thrones was supposed to have. So, was yeah. some kind of cool big montante sword. Honestly, though, yeah. If I had a choice between two of these and a montante, I'd pick a montante. Yeah. Because then I got the extra reach. The thing about two swords, the thing about two swords of equal length, 
is that neither of them increase your distance. Nope. And they're in trouble of hitting each other. Yep. So the reason that most of the time people use a rapier and a dagger is because this sword is only for defending unless you're really close, and this is for attacking, and you can bind into other and stuff. And keeping it vague. There were times when you were effectively able to use that sword to block mm -hmm. and do basically what you do with the rapier and dagger. Yeah, but, but it was when, harder. When we did a long sword versus rapier and dagger, it was mm -hmm. a much more um, concise mm -hmm. story. Uh, and I think that I think that I couldn't count, but I think that um, the long sword alone came out on top both times. Yeah, I think so. even if it wasn't way above. It wasn't like a huge blowout, but well, and here's another thing, was... right? Here's another thing, and and this is something you would take into consideration. I had never fought against that before. Well, I mean, you and I, you have fought against a single long sword. Mm -hmm. But you've never fought against two long swords. No. Had we fought someone, it. so it's a bit of a, there's a bit of surprise going on there, which is a tactic. I don't think it's a worthwhile trade-off. Uh, I would rather do rapier dagger versus um, a long sword than I would do two long swords versus one long sword. But because it's different, it does come with an element of unpredictability, which gives you a possible advantage. Right, and the medieval period is got a pretty good number of sources, but none of them have two swords in them. No, there, there are no masters. Not medieval period. No. Not long sword. No, not treatises. long sword. There, there are all, there's no treatises. Uh, I can't say no because I haven't seen every one of them, but I've seen a lot of treatises and I've never seen a single treatise showing two long swords. Later on, and this is what I want to get to, there are traditions of dual wielding. We've talked about the rapier and dagger, but there's also double side sword, and I don't have any on me. But the side sword is kind of the transitional weapon between rapier and arming sword. It's this cut and thrust sword. It's a bit thicker and a bit shorter than a rapier. Um, and they would have dual wielding side swords. How effective was it? There's no way to know how many people did it because I don't think people were really chronicling little minutiae like that every day. Like, today I saw some guys fight with two, one of them had two swords. You know, you have treatises, basically. I would, I would personally rather use a rapier or a buckler than another weapon. Oh, yeah. Um, not to say it doesn't work, but again, it, it was still used when you were using double uh, side sword. It was still used much like we were using it to parry into things like this. Now, I am not an expert on cultures outside of European martial arts. No. So I can't say if there was, um, I can't say with definity if there was like a Japanese or... There might or... have been, my brain is kind of telling me that there might have been some school that taught katana and wakizashi. No, there was. Like, yeah, there was. So I know that uh, like, is short even Musashi writes about that, okay. uh, which again, historical, how accurate the whole the whole thing about historical accuracy of people. We don't, we like, even I take the Germanic uh, books that we have with a grain of salt too. Anything that comes that's very old that we can't verify, grain of salt always. But um, Katana Wakazashi was a style that they talked about, which is basically rapier and dagger. And of course, video games, et cetera, et cetera, are martial arts that are out there that aren't necessarily used to fight someone else, that are used to look pretty. They definitely have double swords. Oh, yeah. How effective are those actual martial arts? We don't know because people aren't fighting with them anymore. A lot of martial arts will show you two swords doing cool flourishes and stuff, which, but, is, cool. which is cool and awesome and worthy of doing. I love, I do martial arts that are purely for art and don't have any martial application to them. Uh, a, a couple of martial arts that I practice are that way too. But those martial arts that we talk about, the ones with double swords, they do not spar. Mm -hmm. They're not, they not ones that actually have competitions based on points, gear, etc., sure. etc. Um, there is, oh, let me grab this. Uh, there's a couple different Filipino traditions that have uh, different things. So we have um, here you take these. So we've got Kali or Eskrima or Arnis. They all mean different things. They mean it's the same sort of thing, but for different applications. Like Arnis is the sport mm -hmm. version of it. Kali, I don't remember exactly the definition. And then Eskrima, I think it kind of actually refers to the stick itself. But then these are Espada which is, I think it's Spanish. Well, I know the word, yeah. Espada Spanish is for Spanish sword. for sword. And actually, Esgrima is Spanish for fencing. Interesting. The word so there you go. Fencing. So there you go. I didn't know the, the etymology of it, but um, the Philippines were uh, Spanish colonies, I'm pretty sure. You said it might be Portuguese? I don't know. The Portuguese might have been there, too. 
but I know uh, the not, Spanish yeah, war for sure. Not a super big history expert on that area, but they have systems of double wielding weapons of equal length, but you can see these are significantly shorter. Mm -hmm. Significantly shorter. Um, there are systems, and I was doing some of this, where the attacks come from different angles and do different things. How effective are they? I mean, Arnis is, is a thing they do. They, they actually gear up and fight each other, and it's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not an expert on Arnis. I don't know if they frequently use two. There's, there's different versions. So there's, there's the one-handed version, and there's a two-handed version, but it exists around the world. Around the world, multiple cultures have used two weapons, usually of differing lengths. Even the Philippine, uh, the, the Filipino martial arts, they have uh, espada y daga, which is, I, I'm butchering this language, but it's um, sword and, and dagger. Uh, yeah. I bet it's a joke. Um, but sword and dagger. Oh, <laughs> I don't even know where that's going. So sword and dagger, um, but they do two swords of a smaller length. And like we said before, right. um, there's obviously rapier and dagger, rapier and buckler, um, there's uh, side sword and buckler, side sword and dagger. Uh, there's arming sword and buckler. Messer and buckler. Yeah. Uh, a lot of things have been paired with something else. Usually that thing is there specifically to be a defensive weapon. And act, and somewhat like a buckler is really cool because you can use it pretty. You accurate. could, you could, you can, you can you close can in on someone, close someone away, pin their weapon down. It's it's mostly defensive with yeah. some offensive capabilities. Yeah. They also have those buckles with the nasty spikes on the front. Oh yeah, <laughs> what, in India, do they have? Those? Maybe um, other what places. What is that called? Too, There's a word for that. I can't remember. Yeah. Anyway, um, so yes, uh, dual wielding. Uh, so what do we think about dual wielding long swords? No. I, I, it, well, I didn't worked, choose to do it. It worked better than I thought yeah. it would, but still... But I was expecting it to be pretty bad. Yeah, yeah I mean, like... It still was bad. It was, it was worse than one long sword, um, and it was worse than rapier and dagger. Uh, and like we said with anything, you can practice one thing and get pretty good at it. Mm -hmm. The question is, wouldn't it just be better to practice a thing that's more effective from the start? Against a wider variety. Against a wider variety of things. Yeah. I still think that two weapons is more of a liability uh, of this length, is more of a liability than it is actually a benefit. And again, this was not a perfect test because these are significantly lighter than the real sword. So if you'd like to see us try this test again, uh, donate to our Patreon so I can afford more swords. Yeah. Um, but no, seriously, we, we do, I do want to try, I want to try this test again with correctly weighted long swords, because I think that there's going to be a difference. Um, I think these are too light. I think that we had a, a slightly false uh, yeah. result. The question is, will it help or hurt that they're heavier? Yeah, you know? I mean, we don't know. We don't know. I think it's going to get in the way. But, but I think it's uh, going to be harder with a heavier sword. But based but. on this test, because this is all we have, this was more effective than I thought it was going to be. But mostly it was effective when used as a parrying weapon. Yeah? Which, get something shorter from Get, get something shorter from that. Uh, what should they do to the, to the like button? Um, dual wield it. Dual wi wait. Wait. Like oh, put the like button in this hand and the subscribe button in this hand, and and smash smoosh them together. Smoosh them together. Yeah. It's, I don't know. I'm making it up as I go. I'm sorry. You can you can leave now. Sorry. We we yeah. All right. Now the short version. <laughs>